Thank you for listening to the Theory of Creativity podcast. This is Sarah and... Hi! Okay, so today we're going to be talking about the future. Future! Future! Remember that Spongebob episode? Oh, it's like where... I, I, like, I'm basically a Squidward. <laughs> so, yeah. Okay, so... um, <clears throat> Future is tomorrow. Well, now is the present, though. I think now, after the past, but... Well, then you could say the future is, like... Because, like, what is future? Like, how far down the second is past? Yeah. So, like, what is... That is future. Like, we're in the future. <clears throat> so then, we're a time paradox. I mean, I, I feel like that's a pretty good explanation of, like, you know, time on a very finite level, you know? But, like, time in an infinite level means infinity, because time is infinite. But now is finite. Because now is finite. Right, it's finite. Now is now the past. If you guys want to be confused, just <laughs> listen to this one about the pod about the future because, like, we're, we're probably gonna get confused. <laughs> I know I am. Right, because now what was the past? And now is constant. Then we're always in the present, unless we're talking about moment in time. Well, then it would him. wouldn't it be a then? Because it's like because so now is now, right now. But if we're looking at moments in time, because we can't look at moments in the future, right? Because we don't know the future. So it would be a then. So back then, in that moment of time, thinking about the time scale, right? It would be a then. So like, you know, my question, right, is leading into like, if we could look into the future, what would be the term to describe then, but in the future? Because can, can, can you say then? But we're now experience hasn't happened yet hey, hold on can can we get like cookies and get really baked and watch this oh you're good hello okay what oh hello. man we didn't pick up any of that picked up some of it it's quiet but... oh, i was saying that we could eat cookies and then talk about this <laughs> i think that would be even less pr- productive than <laughs> this conversation already <clears throat> but okay so we're kind of talking about this time what, what about the future? Because that's what this podcast is about. So. Right. Yeah. So, like, my question is, right, um, what would describe the future? What are what are words to describe future happening? Well, like I said, I think it would be a bit easier to comprehend if we talk about moments in time, not just time itself. Because cause, cause like we've, we were just talking about, it's like time is sort of like this constantly moving... Uh, um, uh, re- 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 revolving door kind of a thing, right? So, so if we can like nail down events within that the uh, that time, then we can understand it better. So, like by looking at the past, we can understand the future. Um, <coughs> cause, cause, no, because you're trying to, because you're saying, uh, look into the future, just like you know, just look into it, but like we were just talking about the future is 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 like constantly like coming toward uh, towards us so it's kind of meta you know like that that puts like every millisecond in our daily lives like kind of um kind of important level of like sanity or insanity whatever chaos or there was this this um quote in uh, the south park uh game um the the stick of truth yeah have you played that? I've not. Oh. Um, w- uh, one of the characters said, um, from, the day y- from, f- from the day you are born, you are slowly dying. So <laughs> that's just, you're constantly on the, on the march towards death, I guess. Yeah, and like, think about like all of the microorganisms that live within us, too. And, and die. Yeah, and they're facing battles every single second. Like within our bodies, and they're 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 working all this stuff just for us, so that we can live another. Yeah, and every five to seven years, uh, your um, what cells you had in your body five to seven years ago aren't there now. So that's so you're you're really a a, a new person. That's insane. It's like, you know, like Osmosis Jones mm-hmm. with Bill Murray. He died so Whoa. that we can live. Got dark. Um, it's been over five to seven years. Come on, he's dead. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Especially uh, um, uh, was it Drix? Um, Drix the the pill, right? 
like he would have yeah. been gone right oh yeah yeah <laughs> that was a fun that it was a fun movie i liked that movie they uh, had a a show on like kids wb i think yeah do you remember that no no you know i do but i never got into it mm. such a short-lived moment yeah. in time moment in time moments in time um yeah. yeah so why don't they like do time relativity stuff for like kids shows do they do that no well uh not i mean well they have time travel stuff but nothing like that crazy there was this show on cartoon network a while back where there were time travel there were like time travelers there was like this kid and like a buff guy and a robot they did some time stuff i'm trying to remember that one let's see if i can find it okay well while you look that up i'm gonna rant about what i think the future holds and i don't mean the next second i don't mean a minute from now i mean like a hundred years from now because stephen hawking said it himself that the human race will probably not be able to sustain itself on this planet for longer than the next hundred years now while that is a bleak image of the future it also states that the smartest people on the planet think that we're doomed because we fucked ourselves yeah definitely i mentioned this several times in several different podcasts but i reiterate that we just aren't built for this current world that we live in you know we we came from you know living day by day you know uh thinking about our um our you know tribe of of like a few dozen people i guess a few hundred or two thousand people now most of us live in like huge cities uh crammed in into into small spaces and 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 we're just kind of uh uh oversaturated with uh with like content and noise really Mm -hmm. Um, speaking of that um uh the song uh content nausea by uh park uh, parquet courts um definitely rings true like they 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 talk about different things in that song um yeah so definitely look that up but yeah we're pretty much like um taking the pessimistic but very likely uh point that we're frogs boiling in water right now yeah um i don't know i have hope for the future that doesn't mean i'm not gonna look at it in a realistic point of view you know like the glass is filled with water doesn't matter how high or high low is uh yeah because um uh evil succeeds when good people do nothing right so we have to try right yeah I think I think that's kind of like I keep thinking about this like day to day like what is it that my life means you know like why am I here on this planet and every time I come back to it I'm like you know I'm just fucking angry I'm just an angry person that's just like living on, on this planet like trying to make it day to day because like we don't really have a need to survive we haven't gone through a great depression we haven't really had to deal with major war issues um we are us in the safety of our homes kind of living quite content and i'm not content with that right and there are people out there that um that don't have that luxury or that um that uh the resource to be able to 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 to, to live worry free or worry less or worry not to worry as much as us lives as yeah because like our survival instincts are like minimal definitely yeah um i'll actually bring that uh, I'll, I'll actually bring something up after we finally talk about time squad <laughs> you know okay looking at the description now or like this picture that garrison pulled up on his computer i can totally remember this but it did not last long at all no don't think so time squad is about a robot and a little kid Time traveling. 2001 to 2003. Wow. Not not too bad. Two seasons. Uh, Yeah, time travel. Well, well, there there is time travel in cartoons and stuff, but but nothing like like super crazy and elaborate. Like, I guess Doctor Who, I mean, I don't watch that, but I I hear it's like one of the greatest sci-fi shows. But that's not like a kid's show. Like, I'm trying to think like if there's like a kid's show that ultimately describes, you know, maybe it's probably not like i guess 
good for kids to see because I feel like if a parent saw like a TV show talking about how like now is the time to do things, <laughs> then um, well, it might make parents actually freak out a little. Bit. Actually, yeah, there was an episode of um, OKKO OK where uh, Captain Planet showed up, and it kind of ended on, on like a really down note, like. <laughs> the the characters were like hey um if you don't uh clean up this world is gone so dude <laughs> so yeah wow i mean cool for okko OK you know like that's pretty dope bringing mm. in captain planet a little, mm. little cameo there yeah uh so uh we left off talking about uh you were saying we aren't equipped to survive right yeah like we're just we're gas bubbles filled with water Right. Um, there, right. There are are like certain ape sp- uh, sp- species that are sort of uh, following a a trend of the uh, b- b- bonobo um, ape. Uh, sort of has a lot in common with with how humanity is is uh, going about things now. In that they live very isolated lives, mm-hmm. so they don't need to. They don't need the ability to defend themselves as much. Um, and when they ever do get invaders or predators, they aren't equipped for it because they've isolated them themselves and and put themselves in a, in a, in a sticky spot. Right. Because, you know, that makes me think about it because it's like they, since they've, they've isolated themselves, they haven't been able to recognize what a threat is. Mm-hmm. So that makes me think, like, you know, if we were to throw out, like, all of the threats that are going on with climate change right now, would people actually recognize it as a threat? If we do what? If we, like, you know, if we sat here and pointed out all of the different climate change effects that have happened over the last, like, 10 years alone, right? Mm-hmm. If we pointed those out over this like next like ten minutes or so, would people ac- actually recognize them as a threat to our humanity, or would it take something so extreme for them to recognize it as a threat, like the threat of a nuclear war, or the threat of a meteor hitting California in the next like ten thousand years? For most people, unless it's happening right before their eyes, they're not going to do anything. Um... I mean, the Cold War back in the 80s, right, uh, there was, um, uh, like, worry of nuclear attack and stuff, right? And really, that era was pro- probably one of the most, like, vain and superficial eras, right? Where people were just trying to hide themselves in movies and video games and fashion and things like that. So I think it has to be, like, like a tangible threat in front of them, because glo- global warming and nuclear attacks are sort of a nebulous abstract far in the future kind of thing like someone else's problem so unfortunately i think that it would have to be in front of us in order for us to to act but by then it's too late right yeah like you said like the frog is boiling in the water like we don't know that we're boiling alive but you know here we are or maybe uh, there are a few people that do but uh that's someone else's problem Right. I don't think it's, I don't know. I think my hope is, is that there are people out there that recognize the threats and that, you know, like go ahead and make, make changes every day. Because like, you know, I was watching a documentary recently and I'm I'm telling you, this is, this is all geared towards the future guys. This is just hang in there. But like, I was watching a documentary about like how Antarctica is, you know, melting and there's like an entire state of ice that just broke off. And Antarctica is three times the size of the United States. So think about all of that ice melting into the ocean. So that would flood continents. Miami is is already experiencing some of the effects. Yeah, they, I mean, anywhere on the coastline. uh, New York would be terrible once that, it would be uninhabitable, I think. New York, Atlantis. The next Atlantis. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. I mean, okay, so I study Earth sciences, right? The Earth has gone through um, several different transient stages throughout its four and a half billion years. Garrison's yawning. Sorry. That that was real. That was real. (laughs) 
four and a half billion years of life on this planet. Now, that's just not actually life. That's like the life of the planet. <clears throat> so it's gone through several stages to get to this point here and now in the present to where it has become habitual and livable by us human the planet. But no one can protect, predict what kind of changes are to come except for the fact that the sun's going to explode one day. We might um, be hit by a meteor and be shot into space. I don't know. I actually had this thought. Um, I think about it sometimes, but um, I don't like to entertain it because if it were true, there's nothing I could really do. But let's say that, okay, so scientists say that the sun will will explode in like several thousand years, right? I think it's like a a couple of billion years. What if it was actually just like five years from now, but they didn't tell us because they didn't want us to panic. And if people panic, it's just like mass chaos. You know, I think about that too, because time is so finite for us. We are like mice living in like a maze basically we don't really understand there's just no way for our minds to encompass how how vast time really is but if it was to happen tomorrow we would crazy thoughts thoughts. yeah it kind of makes you just want to do nothing for the rest of your life but (laughs) you know the reality is is that it's like what does this all mean like what does it matter because we're just all gonna (laughs) be a ball of fire in a few billion years i guess right you know, talking about the realistic point of view. I think this is the, probably the realest conversation we've ever had on a podcast. Mm-hmm. But, um, yeah, I mean, I kind of I like it. It's, it's good to talk about those existential thoughts sometimes. Well, um, l- let's say that, that uh, we were created by, like, an engineer or something, right? Like, like a space mother that just laid its eggs all across the, the universe. And... and it's basically like a phagogenesis, like I was talking about a few wild podcasts back. Uh, so phagogenesis is basically an organism eats their different creatures and its offspring gain the different characteristics of the organism that it consumed. So basically, what if each planet was just like, were just the, the, the children of like a, of one species trying to like repopulate the universe? Um with different traits and uh and it basically it's like a trial and error thing where um you know the stronger species gets to go and go up into the um into the uh to like the space authority right (laughs) right so uh, so what if we're just not there yet because we haven't proven ourselves as as like sophisticated uh beings worthy of uh of going to the next level because because are you uh familiar with like type one civilization and type two and stuff? I don't think so no. Um, so a type one civilization is 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 a civilization that has mastered their has mastered their planet, can fully harness the the energy from the planet, can can control weather on the surface of the planet and uh, power order uh, ten to the uh, ten. S- 17th squared i don't know i don't know math watts but anyway <laughs> um we're kind of there we're there yeah we're um, pretty close i mean except for like completely controlling the weather i feel like i feel like there's a lot more you know, like we're like 0. 0.7 0. 0.8 or something yeah uh but i'll get to point uh to type three here but once we get to 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 type three we, you know we'll be like uh basically immortalized and we'll be able to like live forever i guess but so type no i'll go with type type two first so type two is master of their solar system can fully harness the energy within uh, their star has established colonies on several celestial bodies um and yeah a lot more power so basically control over their solar system or several solar systems and their and their sun definitely not there no we're close no, that'd be cool if we had power, like, you know, fully harness the power of the sun. You know, I, I can't even imagine, like, what that would well, well, be like. Well, kind of, kind of a bit with solar power. But, you know, okay, so funny story. I went to Walmart earlier to go buy some stuff for today, i.e. onions. And um, they're, they were shut down. Like, the entire Walmart over here at what? Beaver Creek is really? shut down. Like, they had um, police 
you know, crossing, like do not cross tape up and everything. And I asked one of the ladies down at Sally's Beauty Supply, because I went there afterward, and what had happened. And apparently their solar, solar panels caught on fire, so they closed down. Wow. So, yeah, that's a funny little story. Oh, so uh, that's a few steps back. I was going to give Earth credit, but... <laughs> Uh, anyway, so type three. Type three is master of their galaxy. Uh, can fully harness energy from within all galactic stars. Has established colonies within several solar systems. Okay, okay. So that's type three. Um, yeah, definitely not there either. So we're probably just not worthy. Because um, as long as we keep squabbling over petty stuff, we're not gonna get there. We're not gonna get there. We can write about it and think about yeah. it. Yeah. Oh wow! Okay, so what if uh, here here's an idea I just came up came up came, came up with. So let's say our science fiction ideas like like Star Trek and Doctor Who and stuff. <laughs> what if those were ideas given to us by other life forms or perhaps our space mother that that that, that like uh, gave us a spark like something to work with. You know, so we know what to strive towards. Like we're vessels of, like, of the imminent future that we have no idea, like, how to grasp, but we have to put it down mm-hmm. on paper. Yeah, you know, we spoke about this, uh, like, a few podcasts back about the infinite possibilities of reality. Like, everything could, like, could happen or is happening, right? Uh, yeah, okay, so I was I was watching the a video about the mandala effect, um, recently, and you know, I I swear I remember reading about how Nelson Mandela died in prison in my history books. No, he but didn't. he never died. He just died like a couple years ago. I know, in two thousand three, third two thousand thirteen. Yeah, and I'm I'm fucked up by it. I, I don't I don't well, know. So you you thought that he died in prison like a while back? Yeah, I'm thinking like, oh, history has changed because this man died in prison that was what we were taught okay so that's the that's nelson mandela not mandala that's what i said nelson mandela but it's called the mandela effect i just say it weird why is that called that because of nelson mandela no it's not yeah that's why it's called that it's called the the, mandela the man mandela or oh i'm thinking of mandala like the little circle uh uh artwork thing right <laughs> yeah the <laughs> mandala no yeah i know that's what i thought when i first heard it too but it's the nelson mandela effect because apparently this has happened everywhere and i'm just not hearing about it oh but it's not just mandela though no it's not it's like with target and fruit loops and stuff okay wait what is this one about target i have to hear this one it's like okay so which one is the real logo oh this is hard okay the one on the right i'm gonna say one on no the right. i don't think so i think it's Oh no, maybe it, I don't know. I'm pretty sure. Uh, I, I guess let's. Okay, so we're gonna do a little quiz for the Mandela yeah, effect. This is a BuzzFeed quiz. Um, uh, do you wanna like how are we gonna do this? Okay, so you do one and I'll do one. Okay, what color are Uncle Sam's hat? hat wait, what colors? Oh, uh, colors. Um, blue. Uh, the answers are red and white or blue and white. I think it's red and white. No. Okay next what is the name of this candy bar and it looks like a kit kat but the logos are different one has a um hyphen and one doesn't um i know this one simply because i have seen the mandela effect video on this one so it's the one without the hyphen well i would have got that one wrong too yeah (laughs) because apparently it doesn't have a hyphen what does the fruit in the what, what did what does the fruit of the loom logo look like? It's like uh, okay, so one it, has, has that one has a cornucopia and the other one has no cornucopia. Uh, let's say no cornucopia. All right. I feel like you made like a judgmental like like you used your forebrain to figure that one out. What do you mean? I would have guessed the cornucopia one, well, but like it, through previous answers, it was like you could tell like. It's probably what what you expect the least. <laughs> no, because because it's called fruit of the loom, right? And a, like, why is that there? It's not a fruit, so that's why I thought. Oh, because yeah. I, you know, I always thought like the fruit of the loom logo was just grapes, like just like a thing of grapes. 
<laughs> I would have guessed both of those wrong. All right. All right. Perfect. This is for you. Um... Okay. So what does the Target logo look like? And one is like two two red s- spheres with inside each other with a... I, I, this is really hard to describe. <laughs> one looks like a Target. The other one also looks like a Target. But... One with a white circle uh, in the middle and one with the red, basically. Uh, yeah, okay. So I'm going to say the one on the left. Right. You say the, the left, right? Yeah, which is the one with the white circle in the middle. Yeah, that Yeah, that does look right. I'm going to say that one, too. Dang! I, I should have went with, with I, my uh, intuition. Well, we were both wrong. Yeah, I was going, I was going to, but it, it started looking right the more I looked at it. Because I, I, I feel like in commercials, that looks normal. Okay, so next uh, question. In the Saw movies... What does Jigsaw say? Do you want to play? Is it I want to play a game or do you want to play a game? Or would you or would like you? to play a game? Oh, it's either the first one or the last one. Do you know? Wait, this is my question. Um, I don't know. I'm going to say the last one. Do you want to play a game? I what? want. You, yeah, you got him. <laughs> you got that one so wrong. Is I want to play a game. What does Tony the Tiger's nose look like? Okay. Um, this is kind of cute, but I feel like, okay, graphics wise, I'm thinking about this like it's a graphic designer. So one picture has Tony the Tiger with a blue nose. The other one has Tony the Tiger with a black nose. So I'm going to say from a graphics designer point of view, it would be easier to do a black nose. So I'm going to say the black nose. That's wrong. I'm certain about it. Let's click and see. Yeah. I, that's dumb. (laughs) <laughs> all right next uh question uh what's henry the i think it's 15th the, yeah the 15th or and the what's 18th i think it's 18th henry the v i i i holding in, in his famous portrait this is an art history question yeah, I for even... you <laughs> i don't know glove a turkey it's either oh. a glove or a turkey leg it's probably a glove, though. Why would he be holding a turkey leg? I'm going to say turkey leg. Dang it. I, d- this is hard. This is hard. <laughs> that was not an easy one. That's a glove. It's only a glove? What? How can anyone see that? Maybe somebody, like, photoshopped a turkey leg in it one time, and we just... Oh, um, the this is the monocle one. Does rich Uncle Pennybags wear a monocle? The answer is no. However, in my mind, I think yes. Yeah, because I'm thinking of, of the Pringles guy. Yeah, well, there's the... Oh, yeah! So there's the Pringles guy, and then there's the Peanuts guy. He also wears monocle. Oh, wow. But not this guy, the, mono- the Monopoly guy. I kind of forgot so you about no? that. You said no? Yeah, no. I forgot about the Pringles guy. No wonder. Oh, you missed one. Missed one? Where? Right there. What? What does your ideal... Oh, wait. Is that a... That's a bonus. Oh, that's an ad. That's it. Yeah. Never mind. Uh, it's uh, how do you spell the name of, of this meat product company? Oh, this is the Oscar Mayer one. Oscar Mayer. I uh, something something Oscar Mayer Wiener. O s c a r m e y e r. Yeah, there we go. It's it's uh yeah. So it's Oscar O s c a r Mayer M e y e r or Oscar Mayer O s c a r M a y e r. I'm gonna go with uh, M E Y E R. That that that's what? No, no, it's the M A Y E R. Oh, I thought I thought it was like when singing it out. I thought it was wow. Okay. Well, it's like it's like saying mayor, except for without the O. It's like mayor. It's like colonel, like colonel. Ugh. My right. my breast smells <clears throat> like onions. Every time I burp, I taste my onions. What does Pikachu's tail look like? Okay, I have to know this one. Uh, yeah, I know. Okay, I'm going to say it's the one without the black end on it. Yep, that was easy. I feel that you have most of the easy ones. Do you want me to take the next one just in case? Nah. Okay. How do you spell the name of the company that makes this shoe? Skechers. Ooh, good luck with this one. Sketch. It's either... I'm, I'm going to say... Okay, so the options are uh, S-K-E-C-H-E-R-S and S K E T. C H E R S. I'm gonna go with the first one. Without the T. Right. Okay. Okay. All right. You got it right. How do you spell this Kellogg cereal name? And it's a box of Fruit Loops. So give me my options. Either Fruit Loops, Fruit Loops, or Fruit Loops. 
One is spelled fruit normally with L O O P S F. Next one is F R O O T L O O P S. God, this is so weird to say. Or F R E W T L O O P S. I am going to say it is the second one. Yeah, that's that's what I would say too. So it's F R O O T L O O P S. Fill in the bank of fill in the blank the Bernstein bears. Oh boy. Good luck with this one. Okay, one is Bernstein and the other is Bernstein. I'm going with Bernstein. I knew that answer. I did. I knew that one. I thought it was Bernstein. Uh uh-uh. uh. What? It's Bernstein. It's like the freaking Oscar Meyer Oscar Mayer Wiener. That's like um you know Regis Philbin? For the longest time I thought it was Regis Philmin, but yeah. it's Phil Bin. I thought it was Regis Philbin too. No, it's it's Phil Bin. He's got he's got a dumb name. Oh. What is the name of this Warner Bros. animated series? That's the Looney Tunes, so it's okay. I am going to say it's the Looney Tunes with a T U N E S, not T O O N S. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you're definitely getting the easy ones. I don't think that's the, the. I feel like normal people would get that one wrong, though. Like, if mm-hmm. they didn't grow because up watching these. This is like tunes like music. Yeah, I know. That's the weird yeah. spelling of it, too. Like, you'd think it would be T O O, not T U N, because it's cartoon. What's the name of this popular HBO series? Now, for the, the longest, I thought it was sex. In the city, but it's sex and the city. So uh, that's my answer. I would have said sex in the city. I have no idea. That's it. Well, how many did we get right? Uh, we have we got eight out of fifteen. Round of applause. The you obviously pay attention to detail r- really well, and your memory isn't playing in any tricks on you. Impressive performance. Thank you, Buzzfeed. Eight out of ten. That's um, that's like half really. It's almost half. It's not great really you said eight out of 15 yeah okay i thought it was eight out of 10 i was like that's pretty good well it's kind of fun it's fun (laughs) well back to the future yeah back oh two oh that reminds me phil of the future phil of the future yeah meet a boy named phil and his family (gasps) that was a live action yeah on disney that's right i do remember that one that was on for quite a while too okay just for old time's sake let's i kind of want to play the theme song now so Okay, let's hear it. <laughs> After this, I have, I have to go use the restroom. Need a boy named Phil. Phil and his family On the station from the 22nd century Got a rented time machine and they're on their way To a time way, way, way back in the day So now he's Phil, Phil, Phil of the future Keeping it together just as best as he can Phil, Phil, Phil of the future He's a 22nd century man On a holiday through history the final destination was a mystery For something on the time machine had blown So they ended up right here in our time zone And now he fell, fell, fell in the future Never knew in history this is where he would land Fell, fell in the future He's a 22nd century man Fell in the future He's a 22nd century man That's right. I remember, because they, like, they kind of discussed, like, how... They came up with, like, this time-traveling bus or something like that. Isn't that how it was? Yeah, yeah. It's like a time-traveling bus. Yeah, because, like, because in the future, you don't go to places, but you go to times. You go to, yeah, you go to vacation. For, yeah, for, 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 for vacation. That's a cool concept. I like that idea. Yeah. Too bad we never, we like, we're never going to make it to the future because no one's coming well, if the, visiting us. But the future, it's probably already, because, like, who's to say that? we're experiencing this for the first time right because okay all right so you can look at it this way so the fact that there aren't people time traveling from from the future means that we didn't succeed in time travel and we probably ended up destroying ourselves yeah unless there's some sort of like rule or technology where they're where they're not allowed to interact in any meaningful way with us so like they went back into a (gasps) oh my god okay so Think about, you can time travel, but you found a universe where you and the present don't interact. But what's the present, though? Because, like, say... Hold on, we just had a power outage. We didn't lose that, did we? Oh, we didn't lose that. No, okay, no, we didn't lose that. Okay. I don't know Uh, why, but... Uh, 
Yeah, so, like, we found a universe where the time is there, but we, like, for some reason, our universe, or this particular universe, is special in that you can watch it, but you don't have to interact. Oh, so so you can watch it, Mm -hmm. but not interact? Yeah. Well... That's interesting. I mean, that 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 actually reminds me of a recent Adventure Time episode where Finn and Jake were in their parents' old old, old apartment building, but um, but the their parents were from f- were from the past where Finn and Jake were still babies, but oh, yeah. uh, f- uh, f- Finn and Jake from the present were basically like ghosts affecting certain things in the past timeline. Yes. So, like, oh, man, what if that's where ghosts ghosts are? <laughs> so, I mean, like, sometimes the uh, truth is stranger than f- than fiction. If like, if if half of of this stuff we we're talking about turns out true, then we're pretty. It's kind of. I mean, that's the thing. It's like we can't even yeah. fathom it. We're just like, oh, this is so cool. <laughs> like, we just discovered a strawberry. Yay. <laughs> You still have a strawberry, what? Like, like the person that first in, like discovered strawberry is like, ooh, strawberry. Right. Um, there's this idea in time travel. Uh, I forget the exact name, but basically, um, all right. So, say uh, you uh, are like from the future, right? And you went to the past to introduce a certain technology or te- technique to those people, bring it through time. So. Basically, you created the the thing that already existed because you came from the future to show it to the people from the past. Is that confusing? No, because I can understand it. Because there, are, I mean, th- that that's a pretty solid theory. A lot of people, I, there's a name to it too. Yeah. And for those of you who want to throw that at us, please leave it in the comments because we are dumb people who don't want to Google things while we're podcasting. Stop touching yourself like that's weird. <laughs> He's rubbing sniffles. But anyway, so like there's like this theory, right? That like because we, I think you talked about this in a previous podcast too, because we have the technology now. So say like you and I, we go and take fire to a tribe that's mm-hmm. never been shown how to make fire. Yeah. And then now they have the technology. So we're the inventors of fire and we've prolonged the existence of humanity just a little bit longer because we are the evolved right. people so so basically we taught ourselves how to make fire <laughs> yeah <laughs> we did <laughs> uh yeah cool thing hmm. i kind of want to see like let's just like put put um cameras on monkeys and see what happens see who invents fire first between monkeys and who would it be would it be like Oh, oh man. No. Would it be ethically wrong to teach monkeys how to make fire? Well, they could would well, they would have to know the dangers of it cuz they could burn down the forest. I think that's something that we would have to deal with in the time. Mhm. I mean, what purpose does that serve to teach them fire? So that they can cook their meat <laughs> and stay warm. Aren't most apes like herbivores? I think they're omnivores, some of them. Right. Omnivores. Yeah. But, I don't... It, it seems much more dangerous to show them how to make fire. Just, I mean, teach them sign language or something. I, well, yeah. I mean... Because, like, think about animals now. Because, like, 80 years ago, I don't think animals were as domesticated as they are now. You mean wild animals or... Like or cats, just, dogs... Um, we're getting into like whole evolutional uh, I don't, theories I, I, I don't, here because like cats and dogs have been uh, like pets for centuries. That's in, that's insane because that's like hundreds of years of of breeding and such. I mean, you could I would imagine theoretically be able to to tame like tigers and stuff, right? Bears. Yeah. For hundreds of years. That's that's the process. Domestication. Be awesome, a pet tiger. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, well, we're going into 50 minutes now. 50? Yeah. Oh, this is a good one. This is a good one. We're, we're uh, this podcast was... Brought to you by... The future. I don't know. I'll go now. Bye. <laughs>